So I checked all the water pipes in the basement to make sure that they're angled correctly and they're sloped down towards the boiler, which they should be. So if you look at your pipes, like this one, it's coming down at the bottom of the floor joist right here, and it's starting up here at the top of the floor joist. So you want to make sure your water pipes coming from the radiator are angled in the basement so that the water can flow back into the boiler. Since I'm getting the banging from all the pipes, I'm going to have to say it's probably something with the boiler. So I'm going to go ahead and try and flush this out. Now, with the boiler, there's two spigots. There's one on this side right here, and there's another one way down here. One of the things that I noticed when I started looking at the boiler was that if you look at the, the side glass right here, it's completely full. I'm thinking that there might be too much pressure in the system, and hopefully that's what's causing the bang. I'm going to go ahead and drain the boiler right now and fill it back up so that the water is about halfway up the side glass or so here. And uh, hopefully that solves the issue. This is a multifamily house. For whatever reason, they went and installed this boiler facing outward so that you have plenty of room here to work. But on the other one, I noticed I'm going to have about a foot of space there. Because I don't know why, but they installed it backwards. Like this. <laughs> so, i got to find a way to cram my fat ass in this small space back here. So step two, flip the switch on that big red panel right there. And that's going to shut off the boiler. See right here you have the gas pipe coming in. You don't have to shut off the gas there. Just kill it right there. After you shut off the gas burner, now what you want to do is you want to shut off the water. So you want to go ahead and trace where your water line is coming in from. Look for that shutoff valve. Now here, you'll actually see it comes down. And I've got one, two, three more shutoff valves. But I'm going to go ahead and shut this one off on top. Okay, after the water has been shut off, now you want to go ahead and just open up one of the uh, spigots to start the draining. Ooh, it's a beautiful color. If we go ahead and check that sight gauge, we can see now the water is receding down. This side has stopped flowing at least, so we're going to go ahead and close the spigot off. Because there's nothing coming out of here. So, we're good to go. So at this point, as you can see through the uh, sight glass, it's completely empty. Boiler should be empty. I'm going to go ahead and fill it back up with water, turn it on again. All right, our boiler is drained. And it's time to go ahead and turn it back on, turn the water on, all that good stuff, and see if we did, see what we did, and see if it, uh, see if it helped at all. So let's go ahead and turn the water on. Turn the gas burner back on. And get some blinking lights on your, watch them jig it, and your flux capacitor. Is right there. Everything's looking good. That is the manual fill right there. However, you also have a valve right here that you should be able to turn on. And you can hear the water flowing. That way you don't have to sit there with your finger on the button. Just open it very slowly. And there you go.
you go. Should be filling up. And we can see the side glass is filling up. When it gets about halfway, that's when we want to shut it off. You see the red light shut off here and it shut off here because those were indicator lights saying that the water level was actually low. So hopefully now we should be good to go. I'm going to turn the system back on again. Also something to note, once this uh, boiler gets up and running, you want the PSI to actually be between 12 and 15. So all in all it wasn't too bad. Uh, Apparently this was a one, two, three, four, five, six beer job, but most of it was just sitting around waiting for the water to drain. So uh, you could probably cut it down to a two beer job. I never touched a boiler in my life, as you can probably tell by the video. And um, I'm just kind of crossing my fingers and hoping what I did actually solves that water hammer issue. Because I tried calling multiple plumbers, but you know, they're busy. I don't know why plumbers don't like me, but apparently nobody wants to come out here and hang out with me. And I'm in a major city, so i tell you, I should have been a plumber. Could have made a hell of a lot more money than I'm making now. <laughs> That's for sure. So kids, if you're in your 20s, I'm telling you, man, the trades are the way to go. Be a plumber, be an electrician. Man, there's so much money out there. But uh, if you're good with your hands... Definitely get an HVAC, plumbing, electrician, something like that. You don't need to go to college. You can make more money than people with a white collar job. So, unfortunately, I'm too old at this point, but. So I just hack on this stuff for fun. Let's see, hopefully it's working. I don't know. Still sitting at zero. Well, we'll give it 15, 20 minutes to heat up and we'll see what's happening. Well, the issue looks like it's been fixed. I'm not hearing any more steam hammer. I'm not hearing any rattling of the pipes, no clanking, nothing. I had to heat on all last night. I slept through the night, didn't get woken up once. And uh, not only that, but the, the radiators are putting out a lot more heat to it feels like than they were before. Uh, which is really nice because this room used to be a little drafty and uh, now it's definitely not but I want to point out a few more things too so my quest to figure out what was going on with these radiators I actually replaced the air valves on them all too so and I actually wasn't getting any heat at all in some of the radiators until I replaced those so if you have radiators that have no heat at all that's a good place to start also down here you can see that I raised the opposite end of the radiator from where the steam pipe is. So this is a single pipe unit, it's not a, not a two pipe unit, not a closed unit. So um, it's tilted towards the pipe so that the water can run back down there. So you have both the steam and the water um, in that same pipe right there. The water is going down, the steam's coming up, and that's what's causing the water hammer issue. Because the steam's coming up at, you know, 60, 70 miles an hour, and the water's trying to go down, and it can't drain. You know, that's that's that banging that you're hearing. So another thing to point out, too, is that the shutoff valve is right here. You either want to have that all the way closed... Or all the way open when it comes to a seam system. You don't want to have it halfway at all because that's another thing that can cause the, uh, the pipes to rattle and bang like that. So if you were to put a level on the top of this, which I did at one point, um, it was actually the, the bubble was right in the middle and you don't want that. You actually want the bubble to be about, about a half a bubble um, to the left so that the pitch goes down towards the steam pipe. So those are the issues uh, that solved my problem at least. Swapping out the air vent, 
tilting the radiator, making sure that the, uh, the valves were all the way open, and then flushing the boiler and making sure the boiler wasn't overfilled. That was the biggest thing. The boiler, for whatever reason, somebody had filled it up um, beyond that halfway point on the sight glass.